This video is part two of a discussion of equivalence and non-inferiority tests. This part covers two by two crossover studies. Two by two crossover studies are commonly used to demonstrate bioequivalence when comparing a test treatment to a reference treatment. Each subject in the study is given both treatments. Some receive the test treatment first, the rest receive the reference treatment first. The goal is to demonstrate equivalence between the two treatment means. You see here a typical example. In this study, 12 animals were given both a reference treatment and a test treatment. The sequence column indicates which treatment was given first. The first six animals received the reference treatment first followed by the test treatment. The remainder received the test treatment followed by the reference treatment. To analyze the 2 by 2 crossover study in Stat Graphics 18, go to the main menu, select Compare, Equivalence and Non-Inferiority Tests 2 by 2 crossover study. On the Data Input dialog box, indicate where it says Treatment 1, the name of the column containing the results of the reference treatment. In where it says Treatment 2, put in the name of the column with the results for the test treatment. You also need to indicate the column containing the sequence indicators. Be sure when you set up your data sheet that the sequence at the top of the sheet is the reference treatment followed by the test treatment and that the second sequence occurs later in the sheet. You can also indicate identifiers for the subjects. On the Analysis Options dialog box, you need to indicate how the test should be performed. The first thing you need to specify is the null hypothesis. If you want to do an equivalence test between the test treatment and the reference treatment, you should select not equivalent, two-sided as the null hypothesis. If you're trying to demonstrate non-inferiority, where inferiority means that one treatment is less than the other, you select the second radio button. If you're trying to demonstrate non-inferiority, where inferiority means being larger, select inferior greater than. The section labeled Test Statistic indicates how the mean should be compared. You may compare the means by taking their difference, by taking their ratio, or by taking the difference after taking the natural logarithms of the data. You also need to specify equivalence limits. Equivalence limits give a range within which the treatments will be considered to be equivalent. For example, here I've indicated that I will consider the test and reference treatments to be equivalent if the ratio is somewhere between 0 0.8 and 1.25. In the alpha field, I indicate the significance level at which I want to run my equivalence test. Finally, I can elect to display 100 1 minus 2 alpha per set confidence intervals rather than 100 1 minus alpha percent confidence intervals, which is the default. That means that if I'm running my test at a 5% significance level, I would elect to display 90% confidence limits rather than 95% confidence limits. When equivalence testing was first developed, it was common to display 100 1 minus 2 alpha percent confidence intervals when doing an equivalence test. More recently, modified 100 1 minus alpha percent confidence intervals have come into favor. Either way, you'll get the same results. When I run the analysis, I'll be offered several tables and graphs. I'm going to select them all to show you which ones are most useful.
The results of the analysis are placed in a standard analysis window. In this case, there's one text pane and four graphics panes. Before we look at the results, it's important to understand the underlying statistical model. The subjects in this experiment have been given the two treatments in two different orders. One sequence received the reference treatment first, followed by the test treatment. The second sequence received the test treatment first, followed by the reference treatment. For animals that received the reference treatment first, we can express the mean result in period one as being equal to a constant, plus an effect of the reference treatment, plus an effect of period one. The mean result in period two is a constant, plus an effect of the test treatment, plus an effect of period two, plus a possible carryover effect due to the fact that they received the reference treatment before they received the test treatment. Likewise, for the animals in the second sequence, the mean in period one is a constant, plus an effect due to the test treatment, plus an effect of period one. The mean in the second period is a constant, plus an effect of the reference treatment, plus an effect of period two, plus an effect, a carryover effect, due to the fact that they received the test treatment before they received the reference treatment. Our primary interest is in the treatment or formulation effects. If these effects are small, we'll be able to declare the test and reference treatments equivalent. If they're large, we won't. The other effects, the period effects and the carryover effects, are nuisance effects. We really wish they weren't there. In particular, the carryover effects can bias the results of our comparison of the test treatment with the reference treatment. The first thing we'll look at then when we do a 2x2 two two crossover study is the output that shows tests for the statistical significance of carryover treatment and period effects. For each of these three types of effects, there's a t-test that's run and p-values associated with the tests. Small p-values, less than 0.05, would indicate statistically significant effects of the associated type. In this case, all the values are well above 0.05, so there are no significant treatment period or carryover effects in this study. In a balanced study like ours, that has the same number of subjects in each of the sequences, it's easy to calculate these effects. The treatment effect is simply the average of the test results minus the average of the reference results. The period effect is the average result in period two minus the average result in period one. The carryover effect is twice the difference between the average result for the TR sequence and the RT sequence. For unbalanced studies where there are different numbers of subjects in each of the treatments, the calculations are a little bit different, but that's when we let the software do the work. Significant carryover effects would tend to indicate that we did not leave enough time between applying the first treatment and applying the second. That some of the effect of the first treatment remained when we applied that second treatment. If the period and carryover effects are not significant, we can safely apply an equivalence analysis. An equivalence analysis performs two one-sided tests. In this case, it first tests the null hypothesis that the ratio of the test to reference means is less than 0.8. It then tests whether the ratio is greater than 1.25. In this case, the estimated ratio of the test mean to the reference mean is about 1.032. 
a 95% confidence interval for that ratio runs from about 0 0.976 to 1.083. Of particular importance are the values of the t-statistics and the p-values for the lower and upper tests. In this case, both p-values are well below 0.05, so equivalence has been demonstrated. Now let's see what other output Stack Graphics offers. I've loaded the data into the Stack Graphics 18 data sheet. I'll now go to the top menu and select Compare, Equivalence and Non-Inferiority Tests, 2x2 two two Crossover Study. Treatment 1 is the reference treatment. Treatment 2 is the test treatment. The column called Sequence goes here. The animal identifiers go here. On the Analysis Options dialog box, I'll ask to test the ratio of the means. And I'll define equivalence as being between 0.8 and 1.25. On the Tables and Graphs dialog box, I'll ask for all, press OK, and there's my analysis window. I've already discussed the tabular output that Stack Graphics gives. What I haven't shown you is some of the graphical output. Here you see a 95% confidence interval for the ratio of the test mean to the reference mean. It's entirely between the lower equivalence limit and the upper equivalence limit, which is why we could declare the test and reference means to be equivalent. Incidentally, you'll come to the same conclusions if you compare the confidence interval to the equivalence limits as you did when you looked at the p-value for the two one-sided tests. It's also interesting to look at the profile plot. The profile plot draws a line connecting the result of the reference treatment with the result of the test treatment for each subject in the experiment. They're color-coded according to the sequence. If you see a different pattern in the red lines than you do in the black lines, it could be indicative of a significant carryover effect. Another very informative plot is the means plot. This plot shows the average results when the test treatment was applied in period one and when it was applied in period two. It also shows the average results for the reference treatment in both periods. Note that for both the test treatment and the reference treatment, the average result was a little smaller in period two than it was in period one. It's also helpful to click the right mouse button and select pane options. I can have it connect the means not by treatment but by sequence. This shows me another view of the data. The black line shows the mean results for the reference treatment and the test treatment when the reference treatment was given first. The red line shows the average results when the test treatment was given before the reference treatment. Notice that there's a bigger difference between test and reference when the test treatment was given first. This could be indicative of a carryover effect. On the other hand, we should not read too much into these plots since the statistical tests said that the effects were not statistically significant. One last plot I'd like to show you is called the period plot. There's a point on this graph corresponding to each of the animals in the study. It shows the response in period one and the response in period two. The main thing you'll notice in this plot is the large variability between the animals. 
it's actually much larger than any of our estimated effects. Based on this analysis, we would conclude that the test treatment and reference treatment means are equivalent.